Hi guys, so I have said on numerous occasions how Brexit is like a religion and you're going to see in this video a perfect demonstration of that, even more literal than I expected. I'm flipping fed up with the whole of the European Union or Empire. Yeah, yeah. You agree? <laughs> okay, less than five seconds in and it's already going well. So he's fed up with the European Empire. Isn't it ironic that he actually lives in Kent, which is now becoming a port uh, showroom, <laughs> but a European empire. Now, unfortunately, uh, James Whale doesn't actually give any examples of how the European Union is an empire. And it is quite ironic that Brexiteers, these two guys are Brexiteers. It's ironic that Brexiteers are talking about an empire when they actually pretty much want to return to an empire. Of course I do. I mean, they're, yeah. it's, they're just doing it for themselves. They don't even care about their countries. The Germans and the French should understand that. They're just, Barnier, they're just trying to save their own jobs. So, Michel Barnier, really, this is... Okay, this is on a whole new level. So, Michel Barnier is being tough with the UK because he wants, he wants to save his job. It's not that he has been given a mandate, it has been given instructions on how to negotiate with the UK. It's because he wants to keep his job. So we want out, just out. And if you're a Remainer and you don't like it... We, we want out. You are out. <clears throat> um, these Brexiteers seem to think that the UK is still a member of the European Union. No, you left at the end of January. What's been negotiated now is a trade deal. Then tough. I mean, I was a yeah. Remainer. Luckily, I was saved. Hallelujah. I was saved. I saw the light. <laughs> See? It's a religion. <laughs> I used to joke that it was a religion. Now, you know, this guy, uh, James Well, he was a Remainer. I'm not sure why. Like, I would have liked to hear, I would have liked to have heard why he was a Remainer. And what changed his mind? But basically, he was saved by <laughs> Jacob Rees Christ. But um, yeah, and now I'm an overreact. Should we find we very difficult to find any remainers who are prepared to come well, on, isn't it? A lot of people have, who have like grandparents from Europe have got you know foreign passports so they can stay in if they want. Mm. You know, a lot of people. Have. Yeah. Sorry, what? People who have grandparents from Europe have passports. So they can stay. What are you on about? Um, shall we talk to our very good friend Gemma Forte? But yeah. do you think we can keep her off this or not? Yeah, oh yeah, easily. Yeah, that'll be easy. Well, I don't like to start. You say hello to her because I'm Hi, a Gemma. bit frightened of her. Hello, Ash. How are hello, you? James. I'm fine, thank you. See? I'm glad right. I've only just got on the phone. I haven't been listening to you both. That's, That's why. a good thing. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I purposely but... don't because in the old days. I'd listen, and then by the time I came on, I was up for a big fight. Good. <laughs> now, now I'm... Okay, well, listen. No, okay. The, the whole point is that the European Union and any any Remainers left dwindling out there need re-education. Okay, first of all, there are no Remainers. Remain in what? You have left the European Union. There are no Remainers. I know Brexiteers like to continue to use the word Ramoner and Remainer, but nobody's a Remainer. The, Europe the UK has left the European Union. It's no longer a member. Okay. Now, there are some people who want to eventually rejoin. And I think that number will increase. It's small at the moment, but it will increase eventually because we will see what a disaster Brexit will be. And you will see how it was better to be a member of the European Union than to be outside. So... Let's stop talking about Ramoners and Remainers because those people don't exist anymore. I think if you look yeah. at every single poll now, people They're wrong. vote to stay They're all in wrong. by a no, they were. <laughs> They're all wrong. Like, okay, well, here's some polling. No, they're wrong. Okay, you didn't let me finish. What, what if she had said, well, here's a poll that says most people want to, uh, to leave the European Union. What would, he res would his response be to, to that as, you're wrong as well? Like, how is that an argument? You're wrong. They wouldn't, Jim. They wouldn't. You've, Honestly, you've lost. Get over it. I mean, that's the, yeah. really what. The... You've lost. Get over it. Sorry, what has she lost? 
What have you, once again, I talked about this on the stream, it's not about, you know, building a better Britain, it's not about uh, building a relationship with our neighbours, it's not about, you know, improving the lives of ordinary people, it's about a game of football. We won, you lost. No, sorry, some people won, won something, you know, like Jacob Rees-Mogg is going to do very well out of Brexit, Nigel Farage is doing very well out of Brexit, but d did the people, for example, who recently lost their jobs when, uh, you know, certain industries have decided, let, actually, we're going to move to the European Union, we're actually going to move our operations out of the UK, D did those workers... Did they win something? Tell me, what did those people win? You know, it's okay for you to sit in a, in an air-conditioned or, or heated office and say you won something. When there are people who are looking forward to universal credit, what did they win? I would love to know what they won. Oh, yeah, Jim, you've lost. lost. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the best the, argument. Yeah. I must say, it's in the most articulate <laughs> argument. <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't need to be articulate you know because it's all it's all a bunch of these sort no, of up no, themselves no. people who think they know better than the rest of us. Up the European people. Union is trying to become a European empire. <laughs> See, it's the European Union is trying to become an empire. Like these people don't have a problem with the British Empire. I bet you if you ask them about what do you think about the atrocities of the British Empire, they said there were no atrocities. Or, well, you know, it was necessary in order to to spread civilization, but they can't actually point to any examples of how the European Union is an empire. Now, I have tried to call talk radio on numerous occasions in the past, and I haven't been able to get through. I'd like to talk to these people if, you know, I don't have a huge platform, but if they're willing to, to speak with me, I'm willing to talk to them. Um, Oh, we can talk about it. I'd like to know why you think the European Union is an empire. How is it an empire? Generally, when we think of empires, we, we think of large countries or large uh, entities, like blocks, that invade other countries, uh, replace their governments, put in puppets, enfor enforce their will upon uh, nations that are external to them. Where has the European Union acted in this way? Does the European Union have its own army? It doesn't seem to have its own army. It's difficult to have an empire if you don't have an army. Unless it's you're talking about soft power. Um, but then you would have to say that China is an empire as well. You'd have to say the United States is an empire. I assume these guys don't think that's the case. They want to dictate how we live our lives in this country, and I, for one, am not having now, it any more. Now look what's happening. For example, so no. what papers have you been reading? The Express. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't go in that direction. I wouldn't say about the newspaper. I'd say, please give us some examples. Can you give us some? He hasn't demonstrated how the European Union is an empire. He hasn't demonstrated how they're controlling his life. How how has his life changed since Brexit? What can he do now that he couldn't do before? I don't read any newspapers. Oh, no. I listen to the fa <laughs> I don't read newspapers. I listen to myself. Fabulous James Whale on talk radio who talks so much sense. The European Union is the biggest trading block in the world and they've never governed how we have a sovereign country. They don't make our rules. We've just been part of a trading block with regulations within that to have free trade. Gemma, Gem, 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 you're talking nonsense. So Much as I love you, you're talking no, nonsense. No, I'm talking fact. If, once again, he's just saying, you're talking nonsense. Okay. I wish she would, she would respond by saying, how, what, what did I say that's wrong? Point out the error in what I'm saying. Ashton, I'm telling you what the EU we buy is. more champagne yes. than any other country. We One out of four Audis we buy. I mean, that so you, you consume more champagne than other countries. I don't know if that's true. He's saying the UK buys more Audis than other countries. Okay, um, yeah, you're, you're using... <laughs> you are a member of the tra European Union. That was good. Is, or is he criticizing the UK for buying Audis and consuming champagne? I don't understand. He's basically saying... If I'm understanding him correctly, and it is a bit of a struggle for me because 
it doesn't seem to be making to be making a lot of sense here. So consuming lots of of alcohol and buying lots of cars is a demonstration of what of the European Union being an empire of Britain when it was a member being able to trade. I, I don't understand. That's just okay. enough there. Look, do you you want to go on about eco economics? Well, that's pretty sensible, isn't well, it? Well, this is sensible. I mean, this is the whole point. We okay, actually so are, are the people who shop. A free trade deal what? we want. Free tra We Sorry, we are the people who shop. See, are they implying that other European countries don't trade with each other? That, for example, here in Italy, we don't sell cars to other parts. Of, so it's, so if, if I were to go to Germany... I wouldn't be able to find a Fiat car. Or in Germany or in Italy, it's not possible to find a German car. Well, for example, on my own street, which is a little, I live in a little village, on this street, um, my neighbor has a Volkswagen, my other neighbor has a BMW, my other neighbor, somebody has a Porsche, he's doing quite well for himself. Um, Mercedes, there's a Mercedes, and then there are Japanese cars as well. There are other European cars, Peugeot, Renault, Fiat as well. <laughs> so what are they talking about here? Trade deal. You want a free trade deal. Like it okay, was before so... we were in the EEC, like it was then, you know. Yeah. What are they... So, so, do they believe that the European Union had a trade deal with Britain before it became a member of the European Union? I, I really don't understand what they're trying to get at here. Let, let's go back to the way it was before the EC. Do you understand that the European Union was different before, before 1973? Trade was completely different. We've had a free trade deal by being part of the EU. Yeah, we don't want regulations. We don't want to court. be part of it. <laughs> we don't want regulations. So we don't want to agree anything. That's basically what they're saying. You know, they're like, we want to be able to do what we want, but we don't want to agree anything. So it's like saying, I, I want to have a mobile phone contract, but I don't actually want to have the contract part. I want to be able to use the phone, but I don't want to pay the bills. Or I don't want to be, you know, have limits on my data, for example. Uh, no, no, that's not how it works. Of them anymore. It's an empire, an embryonic empire, so Gemma. That they're the built. <laughs> an empire. It's an empire. Can you give us some examples of how it's an empire? Look, look, I'm laughing at this, but I'm looking at both of these two guys, and their faces are serious. They actually believe what they're saying. Building to take over the world. but not. Look what they've done to Greece, Gemma. Look what they've done to Greece. And okay, so Greece is being the example. So, what did they do to Greece? Please explain to me, what did they do to Greece? They lent money to Greece and they said, if you want this money, you need to implement reforms. The problem in Greece is there, there are a number of problems. Now, we can argue about how much money Greece was given in what type of reforms were requested. But generally, Greece was on its knees. The European Union came along and said, we're going to prop up your economy. But there needs to be reforms. There's massive corruption in the south of Europe. And the European Union have been propping up many countries in the European Union, um, in the south of Europe. And reforms have not been forth forthcoming. We, we see a lot of corruption. We, we see a lot of waste. And of course, the European Union was right. And it's... See, it's very important to remember that the European Union is not some sort of um, external entity. It's a combination of countries. So when we talk about the European Union was giving money, it's actually a combination of the countries were giving money to Greece. And it was a combination of the countries who were demanding that Greece make reforms. Like, I'm not, I, I don't want to get into specifics here, but... There were cases of, for example, um, people retiring at the age of 40 and then sitting at home on a huge pension and the, the Greek state was paying for that. It's unacceptable. The, there, there needed to be reforms. And of course, many people didn't want to see these reforms. 
but I'm getting sidetracked. ...to a number of other former Soviet bloc countries which we shouldn't have taken in until their economies had grown bigger. They are yeah. just trying to take over everything. Uh, take over? What do you mean take over? This is a combination of countries working together. Who is, who is in charge? <clears throat> is there a president? I mean an emperor? Who is the emperor? Can you point out who the emperor is? And I, Gemma, I love you. I've got to make you see sense on this. I really have. I, have... <laughs> I haven't heard any sense yet. You've talked about religion. You've, you've presented Brexit as a religion. You talked about an empire. You haven't given any examples of how it's an empire. You, t you, to you told people uh, you lost when you haven't explained what you have actually won. And you still seem to think that the UK is a member of the European Union because we, we're leaving. We, we, we're, you know, we have to go. No, Sleepless nights worrying about me. you. Look, we are, yeah, right. We are in a situation where you've just played an advert on the radio saying business, get ready in three weeks time and business doesn't know what for. But sadly, this is completely inevitable from day dot because everybody's understanding of Brexit was different to the point where go to gov.uk forward slash transition and you'll find you'll out find a lot of businesses there. are already yeah. sorted it's just some of them a lot of businesses are, are already sorted michael gove who's responsible for the end for the transition period for the implementation of the transition period um for preparing britain for brexit told a select committee that 25 percent of businesses are ready 25%. Now, that was a few weeks ago. Maybe it has increased. But you don't need a huge number of businesses not to be ready for everything to come to a grinding halt. But all of this, you know, why was it necessary to create all this bu bureaucracy, all this, paper, uh, this extra paperwork? Wasn't Brexiteers are saying everything is going to be hunky dory, everything is going to be freer. We're going to reduce red tape. We're going to reduce bureaucracy. Everything is going to move much more smoothly because we won't have this bureaucratic uh, EU uh, which is blocking trade. Now you're talking about hiring 50,000 customs officers which haven't been hired. You're building infrastructure in Kent to deal with the disaster. Kent, you know, he can look out his bloody window and he can see, maybe that's why he has it all covered up. He doesn't want to look, he doesn't want the window, he doesn't want people to look out through his window and see the whole place filled up with portaloos. The lazy that's ones where, yeah. who are not. Really? So talk to yeah. farmers, talk to hauliers, talk to uh, people who I've get spoken to farmers. across the and some, hang, on, hang on, some farmers have, are quite upset about the fact they can't send live animals over to Europe. I am very happy they can't do that because there was absolutely no necessity for them to have to put those animals through that terrible torture. But this was not something that was required by the European Union. You could have banned it yourself. There are protests in Ireland to ban the, the, the uh, live exports. That's a, that's a decision of the Irish government. It's not a European requirement. The Irish government can say, look, we're, we're going to ban live exports. And I support banning live exports. But these guys are trying to make it as if, see, now we have this Brexit dividend. We're able to now ban it. No, you could ban it. There's no requirement of the European Union to have live exports. I disagree with that policy. I think it should be done away with. You know, once again, I'm not a sycophant of the European Union. This is something that should be banned. I'm disappointed that the European Union hasn't banned it. I understand why it hasn't, because there are very strong farming lobbies, in particular in France and other European countries, that are against banning this. But it's not a requirement of the European Union. Individual countries can ban it. Once again, the Brexiteers will say, look, we, couldn't, we can't control our borders until we leave the European Union. But then look at countries that are in Schengen, who during the pandemic imposed borders. For example, here in Italy, we, uh, we put up a border with Austria, or actually Austria put up the border with us because they didn't want us at the beginning of the pandemic traveling into Austria. Now, Brexiteers before that would have said, oh, it's impossible for Italy to put up a border with Austria or Austria or vice versa. 
But it, the reality was different. The European Union said individual countries can suspend Schengen in an emergency. Yeah. Now that has stopped, and that's great. And the hauliers are over the moon because the Europeans used to come with their massive petrol tanks and they couldn't compete with them. <laughs> well, some hauliers are. Other yeah, but hauliers the national hauliers. Are what are you talking about? They couldn't compete. Massive. Ho I, I don't. This guy on the left doesn't make any sense. He just has. I have, a, you know, something on a post-it that I'm going to say. And this is like a, an, a winning argument. Did he yeah. just say as the hauliers are over the moon? Yeah, they are, because we spoke to the union, didn't we? The, the, yeah, the union. yeah, sure. So you're on a different planet. No, because it was an unfair playing field. They get their licenses. Well, they, they, Jim, got, their petrol's Jim, much cheaper Jim, in Europe. They can, well, they can fill up their tanks and not even have to fill up. They can come okay, to this so country. Should we and, look at the... Sorry? I, I, the petrol is cheaper? I don't understand what he's talking about here. But maybe, maybe this is ignorance on my my side, but... I wish he'd actually, I think his name is Ash, the guy on the left, I wish he'd actually construct an argument and say, look, this is what I'm going to talk about and explain it in detail. Because he just seems to have, like, buzzwords. Petrol. Farmers. <laughs> I don't know, what, what was it? Some of the, empire. A government document that was leaked that said there's a reasonable... Um, Here's a reasonable scenario for what will happen with a with a no deal. So the availability of medicines and medical products that will drop to. Well, that was proven wrong, wasn't it? That's been shown. No, that's no, Project no. Fear. If that was proven wrong. It's called Project Fear. Does do these guys understand that eighty percent of medicines are imported? Now, not all of it is is manufactured. Now, it's not eighty percent. Man, you know. Um, not 20% is manufactured in the UK, but the requirements to make medicines in the UK, 80% of it is imported. So this is not project fear, this is project reality. If you have tariffs, if you had a blockade at the border, that means medicines and other things will be slowed down. That's a reality. Hang, hang on, can we just talk sensibly, Gemma? We got the Gemma, vaccine first, haven't we? Gemma, Gemma. Gemma. We got the vaccine first. Like, we got the vaccine first. No, you implemented the vaccine by ignoring certain restrictions. Certain checks, I should say, not restrictions. That's what's it, the, This idea that Brexit allowed the vaccine to be implemented in the UK has been debunked. Now, either he doesn't know or he's pretending he doesn't know. You're, you're if I'm coming on, let me see. No, but you, yeah, Gemma, my programme, you want to come on, I'm in charge. And you have to listen to fact, not some of the PR. But you haven't presented any facts. You talked about religion, you talked about empire, you haven't talked about facts. This is a waste of time. How the hell do these people have a radio station? I understand that they're in the pocket of uh, Rupert Murdoch. This is owned by Rupert. I did a video recently about this. This channel, this talk radio, is owned by a media group, which is owned by um, News Corp, which is owned by Rupert Murdoch. So I understand why these people are there. They're there to pump out a story. But really, is this the caliber? It's like I, one guy who's talking about an empire and the other guy whose arguments are basically post-it notes with words on them single phrases on them not even phrases just one word sentences i'm not going to go any further with this because my blood pressure is increasing this is just insane but this is the mentality of the brexiteers now of course as soon as january starts and as soon as we start to see disruption there will be disruption it may not be an absolute disaster but there will be disruption these people will start will pivot to uh, it's the european union's fault it's not our fault. It's not Brexit's fault. Brexit is like a religion. It's, you know, it's untouchable. It's not the religion's fault. It's the people's interpretation of it. So it will be the European Union's fault because uh, they're, you know, they're trying to punish our, punish uh, the UK for leaving. So it, it will be, you can see it, how it has evolved. It has moved from, they don't want us to leave, to, 
they're punishing us for for having left. So there's no win. There's no winning. Brexit will never be the problem. It will always be the European Union or Ramoners or Remainers or whatever. You know these people who are who didn't want us to leave. They tried to stop us leaving. Now that we succeeded, we won and we left. Uh, they're trying to sabotage the UK. And of course, the Brexiteers, the people who are truly suffering. These guys are not suffering. The, the people who are truly suffering will unfortunately listen to them and lap it all up. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you thought about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?